hype has finally returned to the world of competitive Smash Ultimate, as tournaments went down across the world this past weekend that personified the aggressive, fast-paced, exciting gameplay that we all know and love. And today, I'll be recapping it all for you. Welcome to another episode of Rister Recaps. I'm your host, Rister Mice, wishing you a happy belated 4th of July. Without further ado, let's get started and take a look at everything notable that happened in the Smash world this past weekend. The biggest tournament to go down this weekend was Ultcore 3rd, which was additionally the only major, as the second largest tournament, CEO 2024, was barely not a major. The two grand finalists were exactly who I predicted would make it there, Hurt and Raru. Hurt defeated Raru 3-1 in winner's finals and then 3-2 in grands to eventually take the tournament. Hurt's third major win of this season, which makes him the player with the second most major wins for the 2024.1 ranking season. For reference, number one is Mia with a whopping eight major victories. Hurt's notable wins for this tournament include Lax and Rawakusu, as well as Shirayuki in winner's semis. Rauru, on the other hand, got notable wins over Kept, Subaki, and Carmelo before entering top 8 and additionally defeating Ashimo and Yoshidora, both in game 5s. Speaking of which, Ashimo and Yoshidora both had fairly standard runs, with the two of them ironically swapping their seeds around, Ashimo placing 4th as the 3rd seed and Yoshidora placing 3rd as the 4th seed but otherwise, their runs were fairly standard with not too much to talk about. Aside from the top four, the only top eight finisher to actually be a top eight seed was Todiguri, who placed seventh, placing his seed of eighth precisely, giving Banjo yet another major top eight placement. The last three top eight finishers, Yaman Action, Shiryuki, and Karage, were all seeded outside of the top eight and we'll cover their runs in descending order of seed. Yaman Action was the ninth seed, but went on a pretty big loser's run after losing early to Rarukikusu, a run that included notable wins over Xion, Rocky, Taike, Ryuo, and lastly winning a game five set over Pichu main Yonapi to make top eight. Yaman Action would later defeat Karage in top eight 3-1 before losing to Ashimo 3-1 to place fifth. Speaking of Karage, he was the ninth seed of the event and much like Yaman Action, lost early on. In top 96, after defeating Dio 3-2, Karage lost a game five set to Steve main Carmelo, the Steve most famous for beating Glutiny twice. Karage then went on a big run with wins over Ake 3-1, Masha in a game five, and lastly, Robert Kikusu in yet another game five, making top eight through losers to eventually place seventh after losing to Yaman Action. And finally, the lowest seed to make top eight at Old Core third was Shiryuki the Inkling, who entered the tournament as the 13th seed. I don't know why we're surprised about this, since we were just talking about Shiryuki at another major, Sumobato SP48, just a few weeks ago. Either way, Shiryuki actually managed to make top 8 through winners, getting good wins over Ake 3-2, Yoshidora 3-2, and Yonapi 3-0 to make top 8. Sadly though, Shiryuki was defeated back to back by Hurt 3-1 and Yoshidora in a game 5 run back to place 5th. And lastly, my only shout out to a non top 8 finisher goes to Yonapi, giving Pichu another amazing performance at a major by placing 9th as the 28th seed, with wins over Snow and Motsunabe, both huge deals. Is it, is it too early to say that Yonapi is the best Pichu in the world? Like definitively? It is? Okay, we'll give it like another major. It's now time for us to move on to the second largest tournament, but probably the one my North American viewers was watching more closely. CEO 2024. The winner of CEO 2024, and the reason you're probably watching this video right now, is Cola. Cola had an insane run, defined by hype that made the game of Smash Ultimate feel worth it again. It was the best, most exciting gameplay we've seen in a hot minute in Grand Finals, and it was insanely impressive given that Cola won against Riddles' Kazuya to win the tournament. Cola won in Winner's Finals 3-1, lost in Grand's 3-2, but then won the reset in another 3-1 and proceeded to have an explosive pop-off. And this is what I've been missing from the game lately. This raw energy. It's simply magnificent. Cola's other good wins include MVD, Goblin, and DeBuzz. Riddles also had a pretty good run with wins over Chaco Taco, Fuzix, Omega, and Beast Mode Paul twice. Those last two names are pretty significant, as the third and fourth place finishers had pretty insane runs of their own with Beast Mode Paul defeating Jazo, Kobe, and Omega, and with Omega defeating Spickles, Anathema, Jazo, and most impressively, DeBuzz, which did eliminate the second seed at fifth place. 
and Omega only lost two Game 5s to Riddles and BMP. And lastly, rounding out this top 8 are Kobe, Jazo, and Goblin. Jazo actually somewhat underperformed, but only due to getting upset back to back by perhaps the two outstanding performances from this tournament. Goblin played cleanup duty on a lot of rising stars, defeating Henry Luma and Spickles, as well as getting a good win over Anathema. And lastly, one of my personal favorite players ever, Kobe made a big run to fifth at this tournament by doing what Kobe does best and clutching out crazy comeback wins. Kobe defeated MPG 3-1, Osh 9 3-0, Henry Luma in a Game 5 clutch, and lastly, Goblin in another clutch, to eventually place 5th after losing to BMP and to Buzz. Real quick, two shoutouts go to the biggest runs of the entire tournament. The first is Spickles, who placed 9th as the 24th seed with wins over Mr. E, MPG, and Fuzix. The other run belongs to Henry Luma, who also placed 9th, this time as the 22nd seed with wins over Karu and Epic Gabriel in the Rob Ditto. Speaking of Karu, that gives us a wonderful opportunity to transition into our big solitary upsets, because our first belongs to Karu, who defeated Jake the Steve 2-1 in pools, an upset factor 5 win before moving on and then also defeating Sure Hyper in a game 5, good for an upset factor of 4. Sunido was the victim of a double upset first losing to Odyssey in a Game 5 set in Winner's Bracket, and then losing another Game 5 to Lipton in Loser's Bracket for an upset factor 6. Lipton, funnily enough, is a Wario player who actually went on a pretty insane run too. And our last upset is courtesy of Osh9, a me brawler main primarily known for being a Wi-Fi warrior. And at CEO, Osh9 beat Apollo Kage 3-1 for an upset factor 5 win. AK would later lose to MPG's Mega Man later on in bracket to place 25th as a top 8 seed. And that wraps it up for everything notable that took place at CEO 2024. It's now time for us to move on to the other B-tier tournament that took place this weekend, Out of Pocket over in Canada. Out of Pocket was a celebration of Onin, the tournament's namesake, and their graduation. However, despite being the one seed, Onin wasn't the one who took this tournament, as they were upset really early on by Artemis, a Sephiroth main. You may have seen the clip of this Game 5 going around on Twitter. Despite this early upset, Onin made a really good loser's run, defeating Miyaxi, Thembo Z, Justice, Big D, and Sparkle. Two top 8 seeds in that loser's run, by the way. Sadly though, Onin eventually lost to Neo in a Game 5 set to place 5th as the first seed. So if Onin didn't win, who did? Why, ouch of course, the second seed. Ouch had a dominant tear through winner's bracket, defeating Sparkle, Peckham, Base Mage, and Onin twice, only going Game 5 against Base Mage. However, while these top 3 had a great run, the most notable run of the tournament, debatably, belongs to the 4th place finisher the Wii Fit main Xavier, who placed 4th as the 8th seed, with wins over Major, Peckham, Beck99, and Ludo. I say Xavier's run is the most notable because they're the only one who got Lumi rank points off of this tournament, alongside Kobe for his CEO performance, with the two of them now being worth 30 more Lumi rank points than they were previously. And lastly, I want to give a shout out to Beck99, formerly known as Demon, as well as Sparkle the Hero Man, both of whom placed 7th while being double digit seeds. Next, we move over to Europe, France specifically, for a rare occurrence. Two C tier tournaments went down on the exact same weekend in France, and both of them were won by the exact same player. Dear viewers, this may upset some of you to hear, especially if you hate Steve but Crepe Soleil might be the new best player in Europe. Why do I say that? Well, these two tournaments, Cora Cup Nancy and Ultima Arena 26, both had Gluttony and Crepe Soleil in attendance, and Crepe Soleil ended up winning both of them. Cora Cup Nancy went down on June 29th and saw Crepe Soleil and Gluttony meet together in winner's finals. Here, Crepe defeated Gluto 3-1, but something odd happened something that may signify a new era for one of Smash's fan favorites. Gluttony swapped off of Wario and on to Snake, his new Steve counterpick. And you know what? It actually managed to take a game, though not the set. After Gluttony made his way back into Grands though, no more games would be dropped, with Crepe Soleil beating Gluttony 3-0 this time, with Gluto using Snake for Steve and Wario for literally everyone else. Then, one day later on June 30th, Ultima Arena 26 went down, and Gluttony and Crepe Soleil once again made it into winner's finals. In this set, Gluttony tried going solo Snake again, and once again, lost in a 3-0 sweep. 
with Crepe Soleil even going Wario in Game 3 just to flex on Glutiny with his own main. But this time, things were even worse for Gluto because he didn't even make it back into Grands. Instead, he lost in Losers Finals to Susu, France's other notable Steve man. Stop me if you've heard this one before, but Glutiny's Snake managed to take a single game but didn't win the set with Glutiny eventually placing third after being double eliminated by Steve. And just to rub some extra salt in that gaping wound, in Grand Finals, Crepe Soleil and Susu random dittoed for all three games, with Crepe winning easily to take Ultima Arena 26. So yeah, France and Europe as a whole might have a new overlord. A very blocky, minecrafty overlord. But we're not done with Europe just yet, as our next tournament takes place in Norway. Of course, I'm talking about Smashborg Siege. So a uh, little disclaimer, this tournament's top 8 was not streamed. Yeah, I know, everything but the top 8 was streamed. I don't know why either, I'm just rolling with the punches. Let's be brief with this one, shall we? Just like I predicted in my pre-tournament analysis, the winner of Smashborg Siege was Bloom Forever, the first seed. Bloom got wins over the Schmix tape and Lancelot, but interestingly traded sets with Mr. R, losing in winner's finals and needing to win back-to-back -back sets in grands to take the tourney. With that same logic, Mr. R had a great tournament, with wins over Anvil, Lancelot, and like I just mentioned, Bloom Forever. Other than that, this tournament went relatively as seeded, with the notable exceptions of Peachman Bali and Pyrum, who plays Sephiroth in Game & Watch, I think? The only two top 8 finishers to not be top 8 seeds. Now it's time for us to leave Europe behind and come back to the USA for a bit to take a look at Undiscovered Realm Comic Con 2024. Undiscovered Realm Comic Con 2024, which I'm just going to call Undiscovered Realm, took place in New York and drew in a ton of New York talent like Zamba, Jackal, and even a rare quid appearance. In the end, it would be Zamba who took the crown, losing to Jackal in winner's finals but then winning in grands twice to take home the gold. Deja vu. Of course, all the other top seeds in attendance did really well, but the story I personally want to highlight is that of Delta Force, who placed 5th as the 12th seed with Solo Link, perhaps one of the character's best USA placements in a hot minute. And lastly, our final tournament for the day is going to take us all the way back to Japan for Big Lagoon. The winner of Big Lagoon was the third seed, Fire, the Aegis main who we talked about all the way back in my video on the tournament Jingi 2. At that tournament, Fire made history for one of the lowest seeded players to ever win a tiered event taking Grands over Yam in action. And after some time out of the limelight, it seems that Fire is back in it, winning the tourney over Egoski, and most impressively, Todi Goody. You know, Big Lagoon makes me think of my 4th of July celebration. Me and my family went out to a big lake to celebrate yesterday, which is kind of like a big lagoon if you really think about it. Did you guys do anything for the 4th of July if you celebrate it? No matter what you may or may not have done, there's something that you need to do. A certain 4th of July sale that you need to be taking advantage of. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Today's video is partially brought to you by Into the AM, an apparel company partnered with my channel that's dedicated to helping you chase your passions. You know what else they're dedicated to? Great deals, apparently. Because right now, Into the AM is hosting their 4th of July sale with 30% off site-wide. And you can get it for even cheaper, too, when you use my coupon code RISTER at checkout that or any of my affiliate links found in the description or the pinned comment below. Whether you're a dad pouring tea into the harbor while grilling a hot dog, or a teenager lighting some fireworks in the name of patriotism, Into the AM has got what you need to help you look your best. I mean, come on, you can't let the British be better dressed than you, can you? The revolution is relying on you, and you can call me Paul Revere, because I'm calling out that good deals are coming. Good deals are coming. With my coupon code RISTER or affiliate links, get yourself a brand new outfit from Into the AM and directly support my channel when you do. Thanks again to Into the AM for helping me bring this content to you. Now, I believe that was it for the notable tournaments, which means it's time for us to look forward into this upcoming weekend for the upcoming tourneys. Without further ado, let's just jump right in, shall we? The biggest tournament of this upcoming weekend is Patchwork 2024 which was declared a major by Lumirank literally as I was editing last week's episode. The top 8 seeds of Patchwork are, in descending order, Shaddock, Zamba, Mudes, Lima, Cola, Peebnut, Beast Mode Paul, and Wrath. The players I think are going to outplace their seeds are Cola and Lima. Cola for the amazing performance we just saw at CEO, 
and Lima because of the good matchups in Amudeus' Peach and Zamba's Rob. So while I don't know if Lima can beat Shattuck, I know that he can at least make it to Grands. My prediction for winner, as lame as it sounds, is probably gonna just be Shattuck. Though I won't lie, I'm low-key hoping for a Cola dub. Or rather, another Cola dub. Tied for the second largest tournament is Itsukashima 4, going down in Japan. And sadly, the seeding for this tournament is not out yet. So all we have is notable entrants. Easy enough though, as one look will inform you that Hurt is in attendance, and thus will likely win. However, Omowatsu can upset Hurt given the favorable matchup. And I am a personal fan of Omowatsu, so I'm personally hoping he'll do well. The other B tier going down this weekend is in Europe. In Switzerland, actually, which you don't see very often. At Swiss Dome, the top eight seeds are Siski, Tarek, Leon, Super Semi, Lugi, Longo, Tapsi, and Diox6. And you know what? Siski has been labbing hard against Rob lately, so he must be slightly worried about a potential set with Longo. And I'm definitely not just saying that because I really don't want to say that the first seed is going to win for the third tournament in a row. In fact, the last time I covered a Switzerland tournament, Gaming Hotel 2023, Leon won, so I'm going to put my full backing behind Leon to take the tournament. Tarek could also do it, and additionally, look out for Lugi, as it's been a while and he has the potential to win as well. Now we get into the C tiers going down this weekend, of which there are many, and we don't even have to leave Europe to get to our first one. To start off, Hylian Zone 4 is going down in France, and the seeding is not out yet. Going off of notable entrance though, we see that Crepe Soleil is signed up. And after the last two French C tiers I covered, I don't think anyone else is winning this tournament. Maybe Rafflo? Even then though. Next up we've got Phantom 2024, going down in Australia. Top 8 seeds are Kanaji, J Dizzle, Zack, Sebpro101, DD, Pelipper Piccolo, Shrix, and Rebs. Personally, I'm not sure which will win, but I'm looking forward to seeing the next chapter in the epic rivalry of J Dizzle and Kanaji. And personally, I hope J Dizzle prevails. Sorry, I just really like Young Link. Now we head over to North America. First, to Mexico for El Dojo Masters 8 Prefactor, which I believe is in reference to Smash Factor 11. Top 8 seeds are Spargo, Waka, Alendis, Rugal, Loy, Biki, Grogi, and Arikito. But dear viewers, this is an El Dojo Masters tournament. If you've been subbed for a while, you should already know what that means. It means Spargo and Waka are meeting in Grands. It'll happen, mark my words. It's basically the El Dojo Masters trademark. And lastly, we head up to the USA for the other tournament happening in America that's not patchwork, Aloha Beaches 2 Beach Off. This is a Seattle tournament that, sadly, doesn't have its seating published yet. And going off of notable entrance, we can see that the clear favorite to win is Onan, though I believe Shu could pull off a miracle given the favorable matchup. And that's every single notable tournament going down this weekend. As far as miscellaneous Smash news goes, I really don't have much. Other than the fact that this ranking season is rapidly coming to a close. Given the insane season we've had so far, what do you think the top 10 will look like, dear viewers? Leave a comment down below detailing me your personal top 10. And who knows, maybe I'll give my own opinion on the matter. Oh, I suppose there is one other thing. I went to a D tier tournament this past weekend. Too small for me to cover it, but I competed and commentated there. I actually made an upset to make it out of pools, and once there, I had to fight Isaiah, the Pac-Man main you may remember from my video on Full Bloom. Me and Isaiah are actually in the same region, so even though I lost the battle, aka the set, I won the war, aka a clip for content. So without further ado, behold, greatness. Pretty cool, right? Listen, I can feel you judging me from here, but Min Min can do like two cool things in this entire game, and one of them involves having another character's item. Just let me have this. Rest assured, I'm never going to let Isaiah live this down as long as he lives, however long that may be. As far as today goes though, that's going to be it for today's video. Before I go, shout out to my patrons Seth Laster, Logan S, Persipom, Wawa, Mr. Sinister, Happy Feet, Ocean Man, Misty Bot, and my two two patrons Ultis, Diamond Blaze, and Ben L. Additionally, shout out my YouTube members DJ Jr., Defective, Boston R, Gonsus B, Kirby Fan, Nexus, Loco Soko, and my tutu members Mike G, Wu Tang Forever, and Storm Draper. Lastly, extra special thanks to my tier 3 supporters Fat Blizzard, who says Big Deal make it out of a slump, Avidune, who says Mr. Rice is the go to smash content, Iltis, who says MKLeo always comes back, and Grant I Am. 
If you want to support me using any of these methods, links are in the description down below. Don't forget to use my coupon code RISTER in order to get 10% off of any order from Indie the AM. And lastly, I want to give one last thanks to Let Me Fly for their continued support of my channel. Link to their Twitter page is also in the description. Don't miss my next upload, but until then, I've been Mr. Mice, and thank you all so very much for watching.